What's the baby vial paying with? Today we do 2021 number six, mRNA, alternative splicing, and protein denaturation. Whew, that's a long reading prompt. The small vertebrate curl species that is adapted to cold seawater. Over the past 10 years, there's been a gradual increase in water temperature of the habitat. A sustained increase may ultimately affect the ability of the curl to survive. One effect of higher temperatures is that protein misfolding within cells. Curl have several genes that code for heat shock proteins. These proteins help to prevent protein misfolding and or to help to refold proteins to their normal shapes. Scientists conducted experiments to detect the changes in the expression of those krill at four degrees. They put them in four degrees Celsius, then put them in 10 degrees Celsius for three hours, then they put them in a recovery period for four degrees Celsius. A control group was moved from a tank of four to another tank of four and back to the original tank of four. Um, and then they measured the concentration of three different mRNAs, one, two, and three, that were transcribed from these different genes in both the heat shock krill as well as the control krill. They are showing us the transcription of those genes in uh, a, a graph, but we do not see the control. That one is not shown. Um, so you can see that all three mRNAs kind of stayed at basically zero for the original uh, solution of four degrees Celsius. Um, and then we see the mRNA two increases while we're in heat shocking, and then mRNA one will increase after the heat shock shock while there's like a little bit of an increase of three afterward. So number one says identify the H SP mRNA that has the slowest rate of concentration increase in response to heat shock treatment. So rate is just the change over time. Um, and so you can see here down at the bottom that mRNA three has the like the smallest slope. So it has the least uh, the slowest rate of increase. So we see mRNA three. Um, so students said the HSP um, MRI-3 has the slowest rate of concentration increase in response to heat shock treatment as shown on the graph. Part B says to describe the trend in the average concentration of one throughout the experiment. So here we see that one kind of stays level. There's no change for the first three hours. Then from hours three to six, so during that heat shock, we see there is a slight increase of the mRNA-1. And then we see that there is another slight increase, like a more gradual increase um, going from hours, was that six to hours 10? And then after 10 hours, we see that it decreases. Um, and so the, the prompts, uh, sorry, the scoring guidelines say increased concentration slightly between hours three and six during the heat shock. There's an increased concentration at a greater rate from six to 10 or four hours after heat shock, and then decreased concentration after hour 10. So student says when the krill are in four degrees Celsius, water, there is no mRNA-1. When the krill are placed in 10 degree tank, the concentration of mRNA increases from 0 to 5. When the krill are placed back into 4 degrees for 4 hour recovery, the mRNA concentration increases for the first 4 hours, then decreases for the final 2 hours. And this must give you specific numbers from the, um, the graph. So part C says scientists hypothesize a heat shock protein translated from mRNA-1 plays a greater role in refolding proteins than does heat shock pr protein translated from 2. Use the data to support the hypothesis. So if we look here, we see that 2 decreases, but 1 continues increasing. If the point is to reform those proteins, it's going to take place after we've gone through the heat shock and was back in this normal environment. Um, so you can see that mRNA-1 is still expressed at a high level after the heat shock period, while uh, 2 levels decrease after that heat shock when the proteins are needing to be refolded. So the student says graph shows the mRNA concentration increases most drastically after the curl moved back to 4 degrees. This suggests that after curl proteins are denatured, then mRNA-1 is transcribed at a greater frequency to refold the denatured proteins. By contrast, mRNA-3 has a steep drop-off in concentration after the curl moved back to 4 degrees Celsius, indicating that this is not involved in refolding denatured proteins. So Part D says that one and three are transcribed from the same gene. Explain how a cell can produce two different mRNAs from the same gene. So they're saying that we have the exact same mRNA, um, sorry, that we have the same DNA strand, but we have different mRNA strands. So you have to come up with why are you able to get different mRNAs from the same DNA? Well, alternative splicing. Cell expresses different exons and produces alternative splicing. Maybe there were different transcription termination sites, so different poly A sites, or they could have used different promoters. So since there was a different promoter, they read a different gene. So a student says a cell can produce two different mRNAs from the same gene through a process called alternative RNA splicing. Genes contain coding regions called exons that alternate with non-coding 
regions called introns. When transcription occurs, the pre-mRNA transcript has both exons and introns. The transcript then has its introns removed by a splicetome, and exons are joined together. In alternative RNA splicing, different mRNAs can be produced depending on which regions are treated by exons and which are treated as introns. Hope that was helpful. Remember, AP Biopenguins, just success by all.